Now, VR is an amazing experience. I don't think anybody who's tried VR would say otherwise. That being said, sometimes the point of a game is not necessarily to provide the best experience, but to provide the most availability to more people, given that not everybody owns a VR headset, or even to provide some kind of unified experience where people in VR and people who aren't are all able to play together without any issues. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to start up a game in either VR or non-VR, depending on what the player prefers. But before we go ahead and jump into this video, if you enjoyed this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Now, before we go ahead and get started here, I want to discuss a little bit what you're going to need in your project, because we're going to need to make sure a few things are set up correctly. Um, and we're also going to need to make sure that you have the correct blueprints that you need. So starting off here in the scene, you're going to want to make sure that your player start is actually raised above the ground. Uh, at least a little bit. Uh, the reason that it, uh, the reason I'm saying this is because typically if you're using a VR template you may find it sunken into the ground like this. This is typically needed for VR since the origin point for a VR pawn is on the ground typically. Um, however, our, when we start with a PC player, we actually want it to be above the ground. And you don't need to worry about us appearing too tall or anything. We'll actually end up adding an offset so that way our VR pawn will actually still spawn in the correct spot on the ground. So you don't need to worry about that too much. Next, you're going to make sure that you have a VR pawn. Now I'm using the VR template, so I have the VR pawn right here. But you're also going to want to make sure that you have a desktop player as well. So in this case, I actually have under third person BP, I have a third person character. Uh, now I've opted to go for the third person just because it's a little bit more uh, obvious to see when you are spawning in a third person character as, as opposed to a first person. So I figured I'd use a third person for this tutorial. Uh, but any sort of desktop player will work. I'm just using the third person for this example. And that's all that you really need to get started here. Just a couple of quick things there. So now let's go ahead and actually get started with writing the code that we need. It's not going to be too complicated. I'm going to go and start by opening up content here. And I need a folder actually to throw this into. I'll just go and call this, uh, we'll go and call it management. That seems like the best name I can come up with for that. And we'll go and right click and I want to create a new blueprint class called player controller or of type player controller. And I'm just going to call this, um, we'll, go and, we'll go and call it uh, PC underscore, uh, we'll call it starting player. There we go. We're going to call it starting player. Uh, that seems somewhat fitting there. Now we don't need to worry anything about our default player controller settings here on the right in the details panel or anything. We're just going to go and jump right into our event graph here. And we don't need the tick, but we will need the begin play. So I'm going to go and get rid of that. So starting here in our begin play, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started by first getting our HMD data. So I'm just going to type in HMD and it should be the very first one that comes up for you, get HMD data. And we can see this actually does need an execution input and it has an execution output. The world of context we actually don't need to worry about. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Unreal Engine typically ends up automatically filling in the world context. This honestly probably shouldn't even be here. You shouldn't even really see this. So I don't really know why this typically shows up. You'll, you may find that this shows up in a few different uh, blueprint nodes. I don't know why it shows up. It just does. So, um, but you don't need to worry about filling that. You don't need to worry about putting anything in there. So uh, just go and leave the world context alone. But we'll, what we will need here is our HMD data. So I'm gonna drag this out. I'm gonna break our XR HMD data. Now, if you're not familiar with the term HMD, I probably should have mentioned this a second ago, but HMD stands for head mounted display. So this will give us general information about whatever head mounted display we are using. In this case, for this tutorial, I'll be using a valve index. So th this will give me information off my valve index, assuming it's connected. So in order to determine whether or not it is connected, we're going to go ahead and check our valid pin here. So I'm gonna go and break this, or I'm sorry, not break, branch this. Go and drag that over. And we actually don't need any of this other information, but if you ever want to get position, rotational data, anything off of your HMD, then this is definitely a great place to come uh, in order to get that sort of information off your HMD. 
Now, once we have our, now, now that we're checking for HMD to make sure it's valid, now we need to determine uh, whether it is or isn't, which is what our branch here is gonna do, and what we want to do if it is or if it isn't active. So we'll go and start here with the true. So our true is going to be what happened, what we end up doing if our HMD is detected. In this case, my, my index actually is connected right now, so this should return true. So I'm gonna go and bring this up. And we're first going to do a get actor of class. And actually, we don't need all the actors. So I'm, I'm actually going to shorten that because we only have one player start. So I'm going to get actor of class, not all actors. I'm just going to keep this nice and simple here. So since we only have one player start, I'm just going to get a single actor of this class because there's only one we can possibly get. I'm going to go and check for an actor class of player start. And I want this one right here. And once we get this, we're going to want to, uh, we'll come back to this in one second. We're going to want to spawn actor from class. I'll bring that over. The class that we want to input is going to be our VR pawn, since this is our VR pawn that we already have set up. So if I go and jump right over here, that is this VR pawn right here in our content browser. Our spawn transform is going to be taken from our player start. However, we don't want, so let me first get uh, actor transform there. We don't want all the information from the transform. We want to be able to modify some of this because we want to offset the location starting point for our VR pawn. So I'm going to go and split these two struct pins right here. And we'll go and pass through our rotation and our scale just as is because we don't need to make any modifications to those two uh, values. We only need to make a modification to our location. So I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna go and break our vector here. I'm also going to go and make our spawn transfer location there. So we can just go and feed this across. Our X will be fed in and our Y will be fed in. Our Z, however, we want to be able to decrease this value. And if I recall, the value we want to decrease it by is going to be 95. Now the reason for this is if we actually go and jump back over into our scene, if we click on our player start and check the details panel, you can see on our capsule component, we have a half height right here. Um, and actually that's 92, not 95. So I'll, I'll, I wanna change that to 92. But we wanna move it down so that we will actually spawn down here at the ground point of wherever our player start is. So we wanna subtract whatever the capsule half height is. So I'm just gonna go and change it actually to 92. 95 would honestly probably still work pretty well though, to be honest, if you wanna just leave that. Um, and then also just for safety, I'm also going to make sure that our collision handling override, we always, ex we always spawn, we ignore collisions because we don't want to make, we don't want to try and spawn in our player and they just can't spawn for whatever reason because they're colliding with something. Now, the final piece of this is we're just going to want to possess this VR pawn. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in possess, drag this over. And this is actually the reason I decided to go with a, uh, with a player controller. Uh, the player controller automatically has access to the possess. If you decide to try and possess in any other blueprint, you actually have to get a reference to the player controller. So that's why we're actually handling this in the player controller. Um, but yeah, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all this, bring this all down, because some of this will actually end up staying the same. We'll go and leave our false in there. So going from left to right, we still want to check for our player start. We don't need to make all these changes though. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all these nodes. I'm gonna go and right click and recombine the pins here. And I'm just gonna go and straight and drag across that transform and bring that over. Our class, we're going to go and change. We wanna make sure that we get that third person uh, blueprint that we already have. So in this case, it's called third person character. So I'm gonna to wanna to find that. So third person character. And that is it. Now we just need to set up our player controller so that way it will actually run. And this is actually pretty simple as well. So we'll go and compile, save that. I'll jump into our project settings and into our maps and modes and hit this drop down for the selected D mode. We're just going to modify some of the default values here. The player controller, we want to change to our PC starting player since that's the player controller we have. And our default pawn, I'm actually gonna set this to none. Sometimes this can interfere, so you wanna make sure that you're not going to automatically start with anything. You just wanna make sure that that stays none, so that way it doesn't interfere with us. And that is it. So I'm gonna go and save all this, 
And we're going to go and do two tests here. We're going to do one in VR and then we'll come back and we'll do one starting in uh, PC mode. So let's actually go and start here with VR. To start out, we're going to go ahead and start by actually trying to start up in VR. Uh, this is actually pretty simple. You just go ahead and click right here and you want to make sure you do VR preview. That'll go and start us up in VR just as normal. And you can see I already have my controllers all working correctly. Um, this is actually my, my left one. I'm not going to throw on the full display right now since we're just checking to make sure we're starting correctly. So that's actually my right controller right there that I'm moving right now. So you can see it all starts up correctly there. Now, if you want to go and start up in PC mode, you'll unfortunately have to restart the, the uh, project with your VR headset disconnected. Um, I don't know why Unreal Engine acts this way. However, when you want to start up and you want to switch around, um, if you start up with a VR headset connected, it will always try to spawn with a VR pawn until you restart the project with the headset disconnected. Same if you try to start up in PC. Um, if you start up without a VR headset connected, you actually won't even be able to enter VR preview, so you'll kind of be stuck there. Um, so you, you kind of have to restart the whole project with or without your VR headset connected in order for this to work, which is kind of an unfortunate downside when trying to do something like this. Um, but now that we're set up here without a VR headset connected, I can go and press play. And you can see now I'm starting up in what you would expect to see in a PC environment. You can see I'm now in a third person view rather than my typical VR headset. So um, yeah, that's a nice easy way to be able to switch between PC and non-PC and VR mode. And with that, that's how we can start up a game using either a VR headset or using a keyboard and mouse or any other controller that we would possibly want to use. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And also I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see over here on the right, as well as Cassa who made this modern art that you see right behind me. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.